Medical advances have led to better treatment options for patients who suffer from injuries to the brain and spinal cord. Although quality of life can be greatly improved, prevention, where possible, is still the best medicine. Sports and recreation, operating a motor vehicle, each activity comes with some degree of risk. Add teens to the mix and that risk level rises. The adolescent brain, still developing through a flurry of abstract and complex reasoning. One miscalculation or merely a bad decision could have life-altering results. Tackling is the primary source of brain and spinal cord injury for high school football players, which is why athletic programs emphasize proper tackling techniques and stronger penalties for helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. In the case of driving, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reports motor vehicle crashes are the leading cause of teen deaths. Auto accidents are also the leading cause of spinal cord injuries in the U.S., making teen driver safety a top priority. The Atlanta-based Shepherd Center is getting ahead of the problem by creating AutoCoach, an app that parents can use to teach their teens safe driving methods. It's just one of several resources offered by the world-renowned institution, whose leader has a deep and personal connection to the Shepherd mission, as you'll see in today's executive profiles. As a kid growing up, what, was, what were the things that attracted you to the idea of becoming a physical therapist? I had no idea physical therapy even existed. So I was at the University of Miami on the swim team, and one individual came up and said, have you ever thought of physical therapy? And I said, well, what is it? So she told me about physical therapy, and I loved it right away, so I got into school, but started doing the prereqs for that. And I was a springboard diver at Miami, uh -huh. and actually was doing a dive off the 10-meter platform, and broke my back. Ooh. So I was in a body cast, if you could imagine, body cast, full body cast oh, in Miami uh, for nine months. What were the emotions you were feeling and, and what was the process for you after, after you broke your back? Yeah, and when it first happened, we didn't know that I had fractured my back. Um, it, there's a common injury with divers from constant backward bending that you get a stress fracture. Sure. Uh, so I had a start of a fracture even before I knew it. That just, what it did is it really accentuated my pain. So to get rid of that pain, I had to have surgery. Mm -hmm. So I had my surgery, and I'll tell you, all I did was, it was just one day at a time. You know, I couldn't think that, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be in this cast for nine months. Four hours of class, I'm standing in the back because I couldn't sit, because mm. I was in a body cast. And, you know, it's just one day at a time. But that really even confirmed more why I wanted to be a physical therapist. So you'd already thought about physical therapy, but had you been thinking about physical therapy as it relates to spinal cord injuries and, and as such early on, or did this help confirm your direction towards heading towards a place like Shepherd? I, going into school, had I didn't even know spinal cord injury existed. Mm -hmm. And my last year of physical therapy school at Miami, I did a rotation at Jackson Memorial in Miami for spinal cord injury mm -hmm. and just fell in love with it. Um, you know, everybody asks me, is, it, is that really depressing? It's like, you know, no, it's not. The accident happened, there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, but as a physical therapist, taking somebody from, you know, totally paralyzed, can't do much for themselves, to then becoming, you know, being able to do things on their own was just very, very rewarding. I, I can't imagine how much things have changed for you over the years from having been a clinician to now being uh, a manager. Do, do you miss the clinical part of what you did? I, I do very much miss the clinical. Uh, now being in management, what I enjoy is making sure that I set up all our staff for success and doing what they need to do with the patients. Can you tell me any, any examples of people who've helped influence you along the way? When I started at Shepherd Center, Montez Howard was the director of physical therapy, and she was just a leader that you wanted to do well for. You wanted to uh, make her proud of what you were doing and what you were accomplishing. And she always made you go to the next level. She really gave me that confidence to move forward as well. What have you learned emotionally over the 33 years to, to help deal with working at a place like Shepherd? Um, I'll just go back to what I mentioned earlier, that relationship building. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're dealing with a patient and family population that the anxiety is way up here. Uh, more than 50% of our patients and families are coming from out of the state of Georgia. So they've done their homework on what is the best rehab facility for people with brain and spinal cord injury. Of course, Shepherd's number one in my mind. Right. And they're flying over 20 other rehab hospitals to get to Shepherd. So to me, it's more about relationship building. Gary Ulickney, uh announced his retirement. 
taking over for a guy who 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 had become an institution, along with obviously the shepherds themselves. Right. What was that like for you? Was it tough? Um, it wasn't tough. It was very surreal. Um, I did not have the goal of being CEO when I started there at Shepherd Center. Um, that's just something that kind of came through some of Gary Ulickney's guidance as well as the board of directors' guidance. What are you seeing at Shepherd that you'd like to see change or evolve over time? I'd really like to see, and if you know what's going to happen in Washington with health care, please let me know. <laughs> I would love the inside scoop on that. But, you know, we know that payment reform is coming. We know that value is going to be how we're paid. It's going to be not a fee for service, but based on value, quality, and the services that you provide and the cost that it takes. So we're looking at three things. One is better access. We had to turn away almost 300 patients last year because we just didn't have the capacity. We want to make sure that we offer the best care, again, going back to that value equation and not fee for service. Right. So we want to make sure that our outcomes are much better than everybody else's. We want to make sure that all our patients, when they go back to their communities, no matter where they are in the, in the United States, that we keep them healthy and out of the hospital and not utilizing healthcare dollars as much as we can. Shepherd Center offers a lot of um, value-added services, so housing, free housing for patients and families who come in from you know, more than 60 miles away. Mm -hmm. We have rec therapy. You know, most hospitals have one rec th recreation therapist. We have over 30. S pet therapy. There's sports. You know, we just have so much value-added services that every year we count on $12 million of foundation donors to donate that so we can continue these value-added services that make such a huge difference. And these are services that aren't traditionally reimbursed by third-party payers, so it's critical that we get those. And that, I, because of those value-added services, that's why we're able to achieve the outcomes we are. How do you strike that balance between running a business and trying to provide the very best care for people in, in such trying times? It's a very unique culture, and it's, it was very much driven by the founding members of the Shepherd family and Dr. David Apple, who was our founding medical director. Mm -hmm. So keeping that culture alive, which is part humor, part hope, and a lot of hard work, and we're very driven on outcomes. So it's making sure to continue to communicate with the staff what the expectations are, what's negotiable, what's not negotiable, making sure everybody has a part in how are we going to get to our goal of um, not turning away as many people as we have and, and, and making sure that we serve these people and get them back into the community. The contract resolution between Blue Cross Blue Shield of Georgia and Piedmont Healthcare couldn't have come sooner for the Shepherd Center. Many of its patients go to Piedmont Atlanta Hospital for procedures and some receive care provided by Piedmont physicians while at Shepherd.